Okay, so today we're going to do um, trimming for our one-piece lidded jar. Um, so I am starting off with my leather hard um, piece. And I'm just going to, I'm going to attach it by putting a little bit of water down. And then wiggle and stick. And you have a limited amount of time to actually get this um, to be centered. Um, once you get it centered and stop moving it around, it's pretty much going to be um, pretty good and stuck. Now my lid is a little bit wonky, so we're going to have to um, deal with that. It just kind of dried funny, which, you know, whatevs. Um, and I take my needle tool in and I drag that in slowly at the bottom rim. Um, and then you saw it just pops right off. Um, so I'm going to try to clean this up a little bit and we're going to deal a little bit more with um, that, that sort of off-centered element. So I'm going to take a little bit of this um, gobbledygook off on the inside because it's, it's really ragged um, and I want to fix that. And then we're going to check the lid. Oh no, my lid is a little too small. You can see the amount of give that's in there and so you don't want to make it so that your lid comes off like that. So um, all is not lost. My um, pot is like it's a it's leather hard, but it's if I add a little bit of water to the edge here, um, I can go back and just wet it just enough to soften that edge and just pull that in a little bit more. So I'm basically going back and kind of re-throwing that area, but again my my stuff is leather hard just a little bit of water I don't want to do a lot I don't want to get it all mushy all over again just enough to kind of move it around I clean up the edge with a sponge and let's try this out again all right perfect it doesn't fit which is exactly what I want um, because I want the the flange on this lid is kind of flares out a little bit at the bottom and I want to actually have that go inward now my lid is not totally center like that was actually one of the wonkier parts of the whole thing so it's gonna be hard for me to get it like perfect but I'm gonna get it like close ish um, enough so that I can kind of work with it I do like to use these smaller tools um, I'm still working on kind of getting that centered and we're also going to make sure that I have this centered. So if my ring right here is like totally um, round, then um, that's going to help me out quite a bit. I will have to go back and kind of trim the top um, to help center this entire thing. My goal here is to kind of get that top rim as level as possible. Okay, and now I'm going to take off this edge here that was kind of flaring out beforehand, and now I want to try to, so I'm going to take off any sort of excess. You don't need a huge flan, you just need something that's going to sit inside the rim of your, um, of your base, of the body of your jar. But I do want to be really careful about what it is that I take away, um, because you saw before, if you take away too much, like, then your lid doesn't fit. So it is a little bit of a little check every few minutes and see how I'm doing. Alright, so it doesn't still doesn't go all the way in, but that is okay because I'm going to take this moment as a way to level off the top a little bit so that I can actually work with that a little bit more. So I made sure that the bottom um, like ledge of this it looks pretty level with the piece and now I'm going to level off the top because you can see that's wobbly so just starting from the center and working my way out um, working on um, and high speed especially when you got wobbly things high speed is your friend it will help you quite a bit I'm going to use my slightly larger tool to help me like flatten this out And look at how I'm holding my hands, guys. I always have two hands on my tool. Um, that helps keep everything steady. OK, 
Okay, now this should actually level out a little bit better. Let's see. I'm looking at it from the side so that I can actually see um, it waving up and down. I don't know that that totally helped me before, but it's something I can work with, so we'll go with that. I do like these smaller tools more than the um, larger tools just because they tend to stay sharper for longer. Um, however, if you are trimming and you're ending up with dust coming off of the edge, you'll see how I'm getting like little spaghetti, like, I don't know, cheese grated looks. Um, so that works out spectacular. Um, but if you are getting dust, then your stuff is too dry and you're just doling all of your tools. So let's clean off some of this gobbledygook. And see what our pot is looking like. Ooh, much better. So you want a nice um, fit. You don't want it to wiggle around too much. And I think what I would like to do on this one is actually make this, the rim of my pot, um, have a nice like little rounded um, edge to sort of mimic the body of my piece. So I'm going to carve into it um, and kind of round all this out. So if you're looking, again, um, I was telling you guys before, like if you want really clean um, lines and sharp edges and that sort of stuff or any sort of precision thing, the time to put that into your pot is when it is um, leather hard, not when it's still on the wheel. Um, because right now I can go back, so all of the like, like wobble and that sort of stuff, I can actually get rid of a lot of that while trimming. You can already see my lid looks way better than it did before, um, where it was a wobbly mess before. Now it's all coming together. So I'm going to put in like a little bit of a ridge over on the side here. just by angling in the tool and kind of cutting out a little bit of a V shape. So that way it looks like it's a little bit, like it's got uh, like a, a poofy edge. just checking making sure that it's not too thin um, the glory about working with this is that I do tend to throw my lids just a little bit on the thicker side so that way I can go back and kind of carve into it and create some different patterns and that sort of stuff on there and if you have a tendency to throw heavy then you have actually a great opportunity um, to go back and start to put in some really fabulous like um, textures and surfaces um, when you're trimming. It's kind of like working on a lathe if anybody's ever done woodwork before or watched people do woodwork. Um, ton of fun. Just a different access. 
Okay, so now I want to seal this top. Um, these lids like this uh, do have a tendency because we don't have a lot of pressure on it, um, a lot of compression um, when we're making them. They do have a tendency to want to crack in the center with like a little S crack. Um, so by taking the wooden knife and just going over the surface of it, um, you can really reduce that um, tendency for an S crack. And that's happening just like kind of right in the in the center. But also what I'm doing is I'm smoothing out all of the pits and anything that was there before. Um, I highly recommend this instead of trying to sand your work later or at a bisque wear stage or at a um, bone dry stage um, for a couple of reasons. Um, the first reason being that y when you're sanding it um, with... Um, and creating dust, then that's just dust that you're breathing. Um, and even if it's not dust that you're breathing, you're leaving it around for everybody else that's around. And so it's just really not necessary. Um, but the other thing is, is that you're actually gonna get a much smoother finish if you can do this in its greenware state. And the more that you kind of bring it towards a polish and a burnish, um, the better this is gonna go. So a burnish is basically a really highly polished greenware. Um, and it can be glossy. You don't need to go that far, um, especially because that burnish um, kind of actually burns away after you go past um, a bisque temperature. Um, but it will make it so that your pots are easier to smooth out um, once we get to the uh, stoneware stage. Um, and you won't be making a whole bunch of toxic dust. So, um, and it honestly does, like, so if you sand when your pot is um, bone dry, you're basically taking away all of the fine particles and then also taking out chunks of like maybe some grittier bits in there, um, which is gonna leave more pits in the surface of your piece. So you can make a much smoother piece by compressing with your wooden knife and with your, um, I do like to use the yellow rib because it has, not because it's yellow, but because it has just the right amount of sort of flexibility and firmness to it. Um, and that uh, works out very nicely. Okay, so once you've um, finished basically the top half of your pot, um, you can then go in, I'm gonna take out all the little crumbs that I left fall on the inside there you'll be able to go in and just flip this over and um, trim it like a normal pot. Um, and to take this off, you're just gonna give it a little bit of a twist and it should pop right off. Um, and then everything's great. 